curves, there's crazy buildings, and so forth. And so we know there's a lot of work ahead of us. We also have very low tax base. Property taxes are the lowest in the county as a municipality. So we get into this discussion around scare How are we going to pay for all these amenities, all these things that we want as a family? Right? Thoroughfare planning, one of the most expensive. Um, a, a thoroughfare planning is, is one of the most important things we can do as a community for a lot of reasons. Uh, I think we all know what many of us are, whether it's safety, whether it's uh, directing the growth of one of our towns to preserve a few sheds or quality of the water, uh, set the stage for economic development that we know is going to continue to come here along the way. And so this third year plan encapsulates a number of things. Um, the, um, but ultimately, we don't have the roads of the future. So tonight, we're going to walk you through the parts designed on Smith the board will be leading this discussion. I'll tell you what we heard, uh, give you all the feedback that we've collected from various surveys and input, uh, identify, if you will, some of the critical components of where our town, where our town is facing and where we're trying to go. But as far as putting price tags on every project in this intersection or the one that's not here or that, some of that is yet to be defined. But what this does is it puts a stake in the ground for our community. And they say these are things that are important. And it matches up, hopefully, to a large degree, with aspirations and values that we desire as a community uh, to grow into being the best town in the world. So, with that, Jonathan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, Voice has been going in and out today, so I'll hold off on using the microphone until it's absolutely necessary. Uh, Thank you all for coming tonight. My name is Jonathan Smith. I'm one of the transportation engineers from Large Design Solutions. With me is Catherine Withers from our planning group. Um, and we're we're excited to be here. We're happy to be here. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, this is the second meeting. Uh, we've had the first meeting in April uh, where we brought up the idea of an open house uh, about what is a major thoroughfare plan and what are we looking to do. And, Really, we're trying to set the table for the next 20 years of Thompson Station. And you will hear me say the next 20 years until you're tired of it tonight. But that's that's what we're looking at doing is trying to create a framework that works uh, over the long haul. So, uh, again, thank you for coming tonight. And let's see. So, for tonight, I want to review briefly what we did in April, talk about some of the feedback that we got, give you a brief review of the modeling process. There's a lot of engineering math that went into it that I'm pretty sure none of you all would really have any interest in. Okay. Uh, but I'll give you kind of the framework of how we did it. And then we will go over, I'll present to you kind of the current findings and recommendations. Now, as far as where this fits in with the plan, we met in April, we had the open house, tonight's our second meeting, and in July we will take the final plan with our recommendations and our proposals to the planning commission. We have some comment cards in the back, I uh, would encourage you to, to take those, fill those out, leave those with us tonight. We will incorporate those comments as well, anything you hear tonight that you have questions or comments on. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll show you again the email address that we've had set up for this. It's 
I'm not going to quote him as a whole member, but we'll see what we have. And we've been incorporating all of that feedback. So uh, April 16th, we met in here. We had you walk around and had you do some activities. We, we wanted to give you feedback, and you did an excellent job of giving us a lot of information, a lot of thoughts, and a lot of comments. And I just want to say thank you for it. It makes our job a lot easier when people are engaged and actually passionate about this. Because we come back home with just blank pieces of paper that we made our job a whole lot harder. So, um, just briefly going back, you know, the question is what is a major thoroughfare plan? The mayor alluded to it. It's really trying to lay out the long range vision for the town, work with the LDO, work with the comprehensive plan. Also, provide a guidance document for future growth. There were some comments that we'll get into later that people were concerned about growth, how it happens, how things are mitigated. And this plan really gives town staff the, the guidance and the leverage and also kind of sets the table for the development community to know what's expected. It's hard for developers and their engineers when the rules are vague and there are no rules, you don't really know what to expect, you don't know what you're going to be asked to do and contribute towards. But having a plan such as this will help everyone kind of understand what the goals are, everything else. And again, second time I've said it now, this is a 20 year plan. This isn't just the next five years or 10 years. We're looking. <clears throat> Is that better? Oh, goody. Um, told you. Cutting grass and painting my house, my voice is shot. Um, so, uh, how many of y'all were here in April? Okay. These pictures should look real familiar to you. Um, these were some of the, the activities that we asked you to do, and you did, like I said, you did a great job on them, and this was the one where we asked you to put a dot on a map anywhere you had an issue, concern, question about the town's transportation system. And you, know, you can look at the map and there's some consistency with the dots and where they are and the roads that they're on. Now, y'all can also understand the comments varied from dot to dot to some extent. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But we, we boiled, and this was the, one of the maps that we went home with dots and sticky notes, and we went through all of that, and we, we broke it down into generally these categories. This was both the, the dot map, the fill-in-the-blank comments, the emails, the comment cards. Everything kind of boiled down to this pie chart. Um, now, there were a lot of comments that were not exactly really focused on the transportation plan. Some were neighborhood-specific. There were a lot about the town center and things like that. Um, we've incorporated those, we've got a record of those, but the ones that really pertain to the transportation system, the two that stood out the most were people had concerns about roadway safety, intersection safety, and the capacity of the system. Those were far and away the two biggest, biggest groups. Um, and there were also comments about greenways and some people were wanting to know about new roads, what are the new connections, things such as that. Um, this was another one where we wanted you to rank your priorities. And we're about to dive into to each of these a little bit. Um, the way we set these up, it was almost an either or, depending on where you fit left to right on these. Now the first two, we tried to give you an either or question and you gave us yes as an answer, which is fine. I mean, y'all were pretty much, pretty much split between, you know, faster access to things inside of town or going to regional destinations. Okay. Um, there, there is a, a stronger component for maintaining some of the rural character, but then there were also people who were wanting slightly different roadway characters with curb and gutter, sidewalks, greenway trails, such as that. We hear you. Okay. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, now on this one, 
the, the main focus was more on automobile traffic. There's some other questions later that show a different, different answer. Um, but we, we asked you to identify some of the focus areas, things you're concerned about. Um, roadway design, new development, were far and away the top two on this. You know, creating a consistent roadway character, whether that's a, a rural cross-section with ditches and shoulders, or is it more of an urban section with curb and gutter, sidewalks, things such as that. There is a large concern about mitigating the impacts of development. And we understand that. We review the traffic studies for the town. We, we work with staff. We work with the developers, engineers. This document will help guide that. This document, as I said before, will help give staff what they need to have those conversations. And, and again, safety, as always, is a priority. It's one of our priorities as engineers and planners. Now, th this is where we had a slightly different answer to a similar question. There is a, a strong response on this for expanding the Greenway system which is very good and convenient because part of our task was to help develop a Greenway master plan. So we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. There's a, a strong desire for helping to encourage the town center development. Now, a transportation master plan doesn't specifically guarantee town center development, but what we did was we looked at oh, what are we doing and how do we get people from one part of town to this town center area. Where do we need the connections? Where do we need improved connections? So we, we worked this concept in with what we did. Now, before we, we jump into what the recommendations are, if, if you'll beg with me a little bit, I want to take a, a slight trek down. What, what are the existing conditions? You know, what, what does the math say the conditions are? We know what it feels like driving up and down US 31 at different times of the day. Okay. We need to, so we can understand what it looks like, we need to understand how it works now from both a safety and efficiency standpoint because transportation engineers, traffic engineers, that, that is our balance point. And if you've heard me speak before, you've heard me say this a lot, we have to balance safety and efficiency. We can make things very efficient, sometimes safety slides off. We can make things extremely safe and sometimes they're not as efficient. So there is, there is a balance to that, and it's one of those where we try to do both at the same time. So uh, this map is one of several that's in the back. Some of you have already seen it. We looked at all the reported collisions from 2016 to 18. Okay, that standard three-year range is typically what we look at for projects such as this. The, uh, the total number of collisions was 671 in that time frame. Now, the total number that were severe injury, including the, the one fatality that we're aware of and we're cognizant of, um, severe injury fatality was only nine. Okay? Now, yes, nine is nine too many. One is one too many with the fatality. But what this, what this tells me when I look at this, and, and you can easily see, can everybody see this? Are the lights okay? Um, the the two the two tone green are property damage only, and uh, the break even is it over fifteen hundred dollars damage? Is it under fifteen hundred dollars damage? Um, yellow is suspected uh, minor injury. The darker yellow is suspected serious injury. These are just straight out of the Department of Safety database. How it was coded in by the police officer that responded. When when I look at this and I see a lot of green closely spaced, and, and particularly the, the property damage only collisions. The good news is these are what you would normally consider as a minor collision, fender benders, things like that. Looking at how they stack up on 31 and 431, willing to hazard a guess, it's most likely rear end bumped into someone, collisions like that. Now, one of the concerns is when you have narrower roadways and you have a collision that stops traffic backs everything up behind it okay that starts to impact the efficiency of the system so we we looked at these 
And then we also looked at them uh, with regard to the statewide average collision rate. Because whenever you go to the state and say, we have a safety problem, we want safety funds, they ask you, how does it compare to the rate? Okay. And we looked at it both from overall collision rate and serious injury rate. Now, yes, you have some segments on the west side of town. Here's the general math. Number of collisions divided by number of cars on the road. When you don't have a lot of cars on the road, like you do on the west side of town, anything on the top half of the fraction makes a bigger rate. Okay. So I'm not dismissing this, but um, that's how that worked. The signalized intersections and other intersections, they are not there due to overall collision numbers. They are there because that's where injuries occurred. So the, signal, the intersections, it was curious, tripped not the overall rate, but the injury rate. That's just how traffic works sometimes. But there are two, two, one recently completed project and one active project. Wrightson 431 recently converted from stop control to signalized control. Yes, there will still be collisions there. But it is a mitigation for what they found, and that was... Uh, state project to convert that, and then there's Kreitz Lane. Designs are done. This town is going through right-of-way acquisition now to make shoulder and vertical curve improvements. So these are two projects where the town and the state heard that there's an issue, and they've done. They are working on it. Now, now we start getting into the efficiency and. This is where I have the challenge of taking the engineering speak out of the conversation. We grade roadways and intersections based on this thing called level of service. And it's broken down A through F because that's what we're familiar with from school. The main deviation is if you get an F in school, you get to repeat. If you get an F on a roadway, it's just a bad roadway. Okay? Now, even the best engineers can't tell you the difference when they're driving down the road between a C and a D because the differences are minor. But um, one thing that Ken asked me to do is try to break this down. So I want to talk about A, D, and F. A is pretty much free flow. You can drive up and down the road how you want to. Multi-lane, like on an interstate, you can change lanes when you want to. There's not enough traffic out there to impact what you're doing. D, it's a stable mode of operation, but you're getting to kind of an unstable stage where even the small increases in volume, you start to see that impact on your travel. It doesn't take much to make it go from this isn't bad to this is uncomfortable, this is a pain to drive on. And F is where you have very low speeds, you have significant intersection delays, and if you're on a signalized corridor, you don't have what we would consider good signal progression where you make it from green to green to green at all the signals. Now, all that said, we don't design for level of service A. Okay? Similar to drainage systems are not designed for the thousand year storm. They're designed for the 50 or the 100 year storm. If you designed a drainage system for a thousand year storm, you've got the world's biggest pipe. Okay? If we designed for level of service A, you would have a very, very wide road with a lot of lanes that would be overbuilt and underutilized. What we as an industry design for is level of service D. Okay? That's what we design for. Now, the best breakdown I can give you is we design for D. After it's open, it's operating, volumes are grown. We live with level of service E. We make our peace with that. So we design for D, we live with E. When we see it go to F, that's when we fix it. So kind of the mantra I've had to have is you design for D, live with E, fix the Fs. So that's, you'll see how that plays in in the graphics here in a little bit. Um, and you know we're we're all familiar with Google Maps, and it shows the backups and the queues and the delays. Just because these are color coded a certain way, and 
know, I don't think it's a surprise that this part of Columbia shows up as an F. If you drive on it during certain times of the day, you experience it. Um, this part is also an F, but, and you'll see it on the maps in the back, this section has a different color. Volumes don't greatly decrease, but you've got more laneage to spread out the volumes, so therefore the chart that you get from Federal Highway says if you have more laneage, you can handle more volume at a higher level of service. So there's, there's nothing that magical about this. It's just volumes compared to laneages gives you different levels of service. 431 is an F. Um, Clayton Arnold uh, is an E. And, you know, the western side of town is pretty much an A everywhere you go. But, again, that's because you don't have a significant amount of volumes out there. So our target year is 2040. Right? Now, I know we're in 2019. We're not in 2020 yet. But dealing with the models that we have, their base year is 2020, so we grow it to 2040. I cannot 100% accurate tell you everything that's going to happen in 20 years. Um, we, we pulled some population data. Uh, population of the town of Thompson Station in 2000 was 1,283 people. 2016, 4,726. It's a multiple of about 36. Um, now, I, to try to break up the monotony, I had tried to think, okay, what were we, where were we 20 years ago? Okay. Y'all stop and think, where were you in your lives 20 years ago? I'll be honest with you, I had a hard time remembering it at first. I was somewhere between college and career, um, but I couldn't tell you any world events that went on in 1999. So I did what we all do, and I asked the Internet, and it gave me answers. Um, so 1999... The big movie of the year was The Matrix, okay? Um, the Sopranos had just started on TV. We were all happy about the newest phones that came out. MP3s did not exist. Some of the young people in our office would not understand the value of the CD notebook, okay? How many of you had the big notebook in your car? or the sun visor, or for me, the shoebox full of CDs riding around the floorboard. We were also very worried about this thing called Y2K that nobody understood what it was, but it was going to end the world. And we're still here. So that, that was 20 years ago. Now, for a lot of us, that's, those are still recent memories. Okay? Um, gallon of gas, nationwide average was $1.22 a gallon. As of this morning, it's 2.68. A stamp was 33 cents. It's now 55 cents. Okay? Things change over time. So all that said, and, and now that we've, we've had a break from the engineer, the engineer can come back in. How did we model this? How did we do what we did with the analysis? We took all of the planning documents that the town had, the LDO, the comprehensive plan. We took the county's transportation plan. We took the available volumes that we had, the recent counts, the developer's traffic studies. We looked at the collision data from the Department of Safety. We reached out to the regional planning organization, which is called the Greater Nashville Regional Chamber. And they are the, they are the keeper of the travel demand model the model that all local agencies use to distribute and predict traffic over time. There were not a lot of small node area growth rates established in that model because they have just been modeling Thompson Station as part of the county. So what we did was we took their model and their growth rates and then we broke it down corridor by corridor to make it tailored to the town. That way we didn't just apply a blanket growth rate to everything in the town because there's some parts of town that couldn't handle just a blanket growth rate because they're already developed. There's others where, based on what we knew of the growth plans and everything else, it needed to be, needed to be a little bit more fine-tuned. So that 
gave us volumes, that gave us distributions. We then applied them to the existing roadways. And we said, okay, we want to look at, at the year 2040 for the existing roadway network plus everything that is committed. Now for us, committed is a very, very specific and serious word. Committed means there is money tied to that project. Okay? It's not, this is a concept, this is a sketch, this is an idea, this is one that has federal or state dollars tied to it, and it is waiting to be bid. Um, the reason I went on that rant, um, as of right now, the, the interchange that everybody knows about down here is not a committed project. We are all 90 plus percent sure that's going to happen. But we wanted to look at it from apples to apples, what's existing, what's committed, what can we guarantee is going to happen. We never know with the feds and the fed money what could happen. I'm pretty sure that one's going to happen. Um, so, you know, if you remember, the roads, the roads decrease in their level of service and here, here it is. I mean, here's 2018. Here's 2040. Columbia, yeah, it's still an F. Um, Thompson Station gets worse. Everything generally gets worse. But it's volume. It's increase. It's both development outside of the town. It's also development inside of the town over 20 years. Because what we looked at by 2040 because you always have to make some sort of assumption is, and I should have said this before and I apologize, full build out of the town of Thompson Station by the year 2040. Okay, That is, from our perspective, a conservative approach. It's also the worst case for traffic. Okay, Worst case for traffic is everything's built, everybody is here that's going to be here from the development and the, and the nearby area. So, we had to look at something, that's what we picked. So these are the impacts of full, full build out of the town based on the land development ordinance, the comprehensive plan, and, and all of the, the planned uh, subdivisions and things like that. So you, you see, like I said, you see a slight degradation over here. You really see the impacts here, where you've already got development going on you do see some impacts over here as well. Um, so again, and, and these maps are in the back where it will be easier to read and see, that this is what you're looking at in the year 2040 if nothing changes, no improvements are made to the system, to the network. So, um, here's probably why most of y'all are here. This is, these are our proposed improvements by the year 2040. Now, you see the dashed lines are new roads. Okay? Please understand me when I say this, because this is one of the most important things I think I can say tonight. Everything we are proposing as a new road, and really even the road widenings that we're showing, are either done by development as the property sell and develop or done by TDOT for the two roads that belong to TDOT, which would be 31 and 431. We are not proposing that the town do any of these road projects. These are only as development occurs, filling in the missing pieces, the empty sites, the developers would build the roads and the road connections. Okay. I know whenever we show a map like this, where we're showing roads where there are none, and particularly if people start looking at the roads and realizing where their houses are, that's a concern. It was a concern to me when our family farm in West Tennessee had one of these laid on top of it as well. But the only way this happens is as things sell and as things develop. So this is what a lot of this is what would be on the developers to build. This just gives them the framework of the town will generally be looking at a connection from this point to this point sometime over the next 20 years as it develops. 
Does everybody get what I'm saying with that? That this is based on development build out. Okay. Now, we're showing two lane roads in purple, three lane in blue, and four lane in green. Let me also say when we're talking about a three lane section, what we are saying is one lane in each direction and turn lanes where they're needed at the intersections. Maintain that narrower character, that narrower corridor, but when you get to the intersections, put in the turn lanes that you need to. So that's why we're keeping we're keeping Kreitz really as its existing two lane section, but we're going to put in turn lanes at the intersections where they're needed. All these new ones, same thing. One lane each direction, but put the turn lanes in at the intersection. Now, the elephant in the room to some people. US 31, Columbia Pike. We are proposing widening Columbia Avenue. Okay. I've had this conversation with town staff, with the mayor. What we are proposing to do with this is a median divided four lane section. So you'll have two lanes in each direction and a grass or planted median going down the middle. Okay. Most people call that a boulevard or a parkway type streetscape. I've got some sketches later in here. The benefit of that is it gives you really the functionality of what people would think of as a five lane. Because again, you have the two in each direction. Keep a median in the middle, control access, beautify the streetscape, keep some sort of a rule type character with that with landscaping, but turn lanes at the intersections. Um, but again, we're, we're trying to have that balance of providing extra capacity, providing extra safety with more laneage, giving you a chance to maybe spread out some of those long queues and those long trains of cars that get nose to tail and go down the road. We can give them more room to spread out. That queue should be shorter. Um, also gives you room to get away from a, a wreck or a collision if there is one. Um, but and this ties back into the concerns about safety and capacity. So, Columbia. This is what we have now. This is an overhead shot of pretty much the same area. And according to TDOT, and it's true depending on where you are on Columbia, you have a two foot shoulder. I'd say a max two foot shoulder. It's narrower in some places. Five foot bike lane, 12 foot travel lanes. Okay. That's, that's what it looks like when you're in the driver's seat. If you're a drone or a helicopter, that's what you see. Um, now, the the edge to edge pavement width here is 38 feet. The right of way for most of Columbia is 66 feet. So TDOT has extra right of way out there don't have to get, they wouldn't have to buy, you know, a whole new one of these to put it right there. This is, this is the schematic of what we're looking at as a recommendation at this stage for Columbia in the future. Sidewalk on one side, street trees, grass area, two 11 foot travel lanes a 12 foot landscape median, 12 foot two 12 foot travel lanes, street tree. And then over here, we're looking at a, my eyes are bad, but I think that says a 12 foot path. That's the greenway. One of the things we're looking at doing is bringing the greenway up with the roads in places so you have that mixed use, you have the, the multimodal aspect to it. This is what we're looking at carrying forward as a recommendation to the Planning Commission. But again, there's comment cards in the back. Uh, Catherine and I will be here for probably half an hour or more after this if you have any questions you want to come up and ask us. Um, so this width, in case you're curious, is 82 feet edge to edge. Now, if you remember, the right-of-way width for most of that is 66 feet. Now. If the math I did earlier is right, 82 minus 66 gives you 16. 
divide that in two is eight on each side. That means the right of way that TDOT would have to get is only another eight feet off each side of the road. Okay. I know there has been concern in the past of particularly in every town we've worked with when you start talking about a wider section, people have visions of runways and 747s. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about an extra eight feet off each side. Um, so again, here's what it is now. Here's a schematic cartoon example of what it could be in the future. If you want to see an example of what this looks like in real life, you don't have to go that far. Carruthers Parkway in Franklin, south of Ovation Drive. Okay. This is what they have. They have a sidewalk on one side. They have a wide median in the middle. Their greenway goes up the east side of the road. If you want to see what it feels like, if you haven't, drive that. That's the best local example I know of right now to give you. Um, I drive it on a Saturday. It gets a little congested over here with the morning rush hour. Um, so having said all of that, what does it get you? What does it get the town if these improvements move forward? Twenty forty projected with all the improvements. This does include the Buckner interchange down here. Okay. Since we knew it was going to happen as we were going, through, well, ninety plus percent sure it's going to happen. Um, we took a look. We redistributed the volumes. If you notice, there's no purple on this map. We are e or better on every roadway based on our volumes, distributions, and the way we, we looked at everything. The, the county had a plan for the roads of Evergreen and Sedbury to realign, straighten, take out some of the sharp curves. That was in the county plan. We brought it forward into this plan. Okay. Again, that's going to happen as development happens most likely. There could be the opportunity for a partnership between the state, county, and town from a safety standpoint if they wanted to look at certain segments, certain areas. That could be something that is, is undertaken. But you know, notice Columbia stays at an E. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the things that degraded over here, we've, we've brought back up. We've, we've made them better with... It's really due to the new connections and redistributing volumes on the new roadways. So this might be easier to see because you can see the change purple and red to red and orange and yellows. Um, again, these maps are in the back on those two tables. Um, and again, you know, the, these are just the, the infill of this area as the development occurs. So it's, it's mitigating their impacts and providing improvements to the town system. Um, so greenways, we, we, we mentioned them before. Y'all brought it up that this is a concern. This is something the town is interested in. So we took the existing town greenway plan from several years ago, Wendy, um, and we, we tried to modify it and update it. So new paths are shown in red. And with the new ones, we tried to adhere closely to the streams and creeks to put them along those banks, lay them out. So as development occurs, you have a greenway trail that could also help serve as a stream buffer, help protect the stream a little bit. Um, we looked at our new roads of including a greenway trail with them. This is a, a street view of one where you have a multi-lane roadway, a barrier, and a nice greenway trail next to it. So there, there are a lot of examples across the country. People are starting to do this of bringing things in, but that doesn't mean you put bicycles and cars and pedestrians right next to each other. You give some sort of barrier and some sort of protection from that. But we wanted to look at with the new paths and the new road connections of really trying to help lay out ways you can connect neighborhoods and go neighborhood to neighborhood. And also 
connect it back to town center so that we could have a system where if you wanted to, you could get from one part of town to the town center, bicycle, pedestrian, things of that nature, but also having more roadway connections that get you from place to place. Now, and, and Wendy called me out on this earlier when she and I were talking about this. I know everything I have said to this date says TDOT and development pays for everything. Okay? That's still what I'm saying. But there may be the opportunity or the project or reasons for the town to say, we want to take that on. We want to advance this a little bit quicker. We recognize this is a safety problem. This is a missing link in our system that we want to address. And the question always comes down to how do you pay for it? Okay. Tennessee Department of Transportation local programs. Okay. This is a division of TDOT that helps administer funds from the Federal Highway Administration through TDOT to local agencies. Okay. These are our grant applications. These are grant programs that vary from either only requiring a 20% local match to a 10% local match to a 20% local match. Some of them are 100% federally funded. The town has no cost. It really depends on the type of, type of project. Some of these are surface transportation. Some are bridge replacement, interchange lighting, um, state industrial access roads, and other bridge replacements. And then there's this transportation alternatives program. That's a whole different set of grants. It can be greenways. It can be bike lanes. Uh, a lot of what I've done in the past is this is where you have the money to upgrade your signal equipment, add in new lanes at an intersection, add in uh, intelligent transportation systems, really grow your system. And a lot of these, at least as of this funding cycle, are 100% federally funded. This is not money that TDOT has to generate out of their own coffers. This is not gas tax money. This is not local taxes of any kind. This is from the federal government, from federal highway to the states. Um, now, the application form for these has changed over the last 13, 14 years that I've been doing this. Seems like it changes every year. The one question that remains the same, is this project on your major thoroughfare plan? Okay. If it's not, you're probably not going to get the grant. So bring, trying to bring it all back together, why do this? Why has the town asked us to go through this exercise? Yeah. Address safety concerns, address capacity concerns, address the impacts of new development, try to find ways to help fund transportation improvements. Um, so where do we go from here? And I promise here in a little bit I will be quiet because I'm about to get into some cough drops. Um, we have some drawings in the back. We've got comment cards in the back. We will be making this a version of this presentation at the July Planning Commission meeting. That will be the public comment meeting. That's where you can get up, ask questions to the Planning Commission, ask questions to us, where we can really dive into it. We will be providing these recommendations for the Planning Commission to consider adoption of this plan. Um, again, Ms. Withers and I will be here for probably 30, 45 minutes after this meeting. If you have any questions, please come up to us. We'll be here. We'll answer everything we can. Um, again, comment cards. This is the email address I could not remember earlier. ts.mtp at barge, B-A-R-G-E, design.com. Some of you have already been emailing us. I think, best I can remember, we have responded to all the emails that have come in as of this date. Um, but again, we'll be in the back of the room. We'll be up here. And I really appreciate it. Thank you all for your time.
thank you all for coming. Uh, you know, there's no free lunch. Um, uh, it's exciting to know there's federal funds out there. Our town philosophically tells us how to take this to go. Uh, we adopted this controlled growth. Growth needs to pay for itself. Attitude, you know, I don't see us changing that tune anytime soon. At uh, the end of the day, cards are being dealt by Spring Hill. Check out Mr. Willis's article this afternoon with some of the late recent. Franklin's doing their thing. Middle Tennessee, Nashville doing its thing. Multiple counties in greater Nashville, from Clarksville, Rutherford County, Murray County. We're all trying to collaborate to tackle this, this thing called traffic and how to deal with explosive growth. And we're not in it. So we'll stick to our guns, we'll be pragmatic, we'll try to play nice with folks, but we want to drive a pretty hard bargain on things that are important to us. So we're not just going to roll over. And this is one way in which, when we put a stake in the ground, we said these are important priorities and critical to us, and we can elevate it at the TDOT level, the federal level, that allows us really to have a voice in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a seat at the table. And that's hard sometimes when we're a small town, right? It's easy to have a small town like here and say, you know, just if we get top of the station, we go along with it, then we can go along with it further. No. Listen to what we're talking about as a community because our aspirations and values are similar to Spring Hill or Franklin and Greater Nashville, but they're also different. And so we're part of this greater role and we got to work together. Uh, what the community can help the board do and the planning commission is as we outline the critical path items and the priorities and we can start talking about what does that look like cost wise. I mean, Spring Hill's plan, Chase the Rabbit, they're two, three, four hundred million dollars. And infrastructure improvements, and they're trying to figure out how to go after some of the things that we were just talking about. We're ahead of the curve in certain respects. The plan's only as good as the community you know, uh, resolve to, to see some of this through. And so we still have time as a community. That's good news. Uh, this will be wrapped up with the Greater Middle Tennessee plan, and it'll be iterative, it'll change over the years. Um, and the town, we're doing our job, is we're constantly coming back to this, just like we come back to our LDO and say, what can we do better? What can we learn best practice-wise in other communities? I appreciate Marge, you all bringing some ideas about four-lane cross-section and the median boulevard idea for Columbia Pike. I mean, I'm one of those guys that wants to see it stay narrow and slow, stop and have an ice cream town at Topsy Station, because I doubt that it's pushed out, it's, you know, out to where that river. Gas station is in the Baptist Church, right? That's what we talked about. Make this a thriving, greater habitat area. And so these are these these opportunities. And so give us some more feedback. Tell us what we missed. Let's get this thing on line, and we'll take it to the board and get something that will play some ball. And then we can continue, continue progress and path. Thanks again. <laughs>